should be the form. This was based on the linear dependence idea. Then the other two new case, relatively new cases, because I'm not sure that I remember doing this in linear algebra, but maybe you guys did, is the the underdetermined case where n is less than m, so the number of rows is less than the number of columns. So we have more unknowns than equations, so the system is underdetermined. Then the solution you can go after is what's called the minimum norm solution. You're going to be able to find a solution, but you want to constrain it in such a way that it has this minimum norm property. It's, it's got, it minimizes the length of the solution vector x such that ax equals b. Well, assuming that the rank of a is n, now you have to think, does that make sense? We had n rows and m columns. We had um, rank of a is equal to n says that at least we have a rank that equals the number of equations. It doesn't equal the number of columns because remember the rank of a matrix is the minimum of n and m. It, it can't be any greater than n, but it's at full rank as a rectangular matrix if it's equal to the number of rows, right? So if it satisfies that, then a times a Hermitian is invertible. So this is, first of, first of all, the first thing I would do as a dummies check is say invertible. That means the matrix must be square. Is the matrix square? It is, right? Because I'm going to go A is N by M and A Hermitian is M by N. So it's compatible and we end up with an N by N matrix. And if A has rank N, then we have a square matrix that's of size N by N and it's invertible. So then um, we can plug that into our solution as given here. X naught will be A Hermitian times A, A Hermitian inverse times B. That's the, the minimum norm solution. This is not a proof of it. This is just the statement that this is the minimum norm solution. Or more compactly, you can say that A plus is the matrix that has to multiply times b to get the solution, and that's this thing called the pseudo-inverse of A, which is formed um, as given right here. Switching this around and having the system overdetermined play the same sort of a setup, only now when it's overdetermined, we have an abundance of equations and not and we have a limited number of unknowns so we have more options to go with you know we could just take a subset of the equations and just solve that as a n equals m type scenario but what this is telling us is that when we're overdetermined we should resort to an optimization theory technique known as least squares do that better. And with least squares estimation, we can take advantage of all the information we have and get a more optimal solution. Because if we had more equations than we did unknowns, the question would be if we use this subset of equations to solve for the unknowns, how is that going to compare to if we use this other set? Is one going to be better than the other? And the, the least squares approach would say let's use everything and use that as an optima optimization criteria. In this case, the approach is to minimize the error between B and, and A times X. In other words, get the best fit possible in the least square sense or in the sense of the L2 norm. This is an L2 norm sense of B which is the unknowns vector. I mean, B is the, um, the measured value, and, and X is the fitting parameters to try to make the data times X fit to the, the measured values, B. 
So we, we make the error vector B minus AX orthogonal to the avail available data. This is a known result from least squares theory that when you make the data orthogonal to the error, you have this thing called the projection theorem. And I think we'll look at that in another context in a later chapter. You, could, you can do no better than have the data orthogonal to the error. It's the idea that if um, I'm not sure that I can draw this picture correctly, but So the projection theorem, and I think I've got this drawn right because I have, definitely haven't reviewed this. Um, by making that error vector, which is connecting this thing up here down to here, orthogonal to the data space, you've minimized the error. There's no other um, solution that's going to have a smaller error when it's orthogonal in that sense. The data space are your observations, which is all of the data which is contained um, in the matrix A. So the data space is the, is the, are the elements of the A matrix. So when that solved for, um, the equation becomes A Hermitian times the error is equal to A Hermitian times B minus A X naught, where that's the optimal um, least square solution. Set that equal to zero. In other words, make the data and this is the error. And what are we doing? We're um, designing it so that the data is perpendicular to the error when we set it equal to zero, because that's an inner product, right, when we're doing that. Um, so we do that operation, and, and that's, that's the optimization right there. And then we solve for x naught, and when you solve for x naught, you get the blue boxed equation. And that's just sort of the complement solution to what was done for the underdetermined system. Again, this is the pseudo inverse, and now the pseudo inverse is defined in the opposite order because we're overdetermined. And so that's that's the answer for the overdetermined case using a least squares result. And I don't remember in the homework whether it's the over or the underdetermined. If you've worked the problems already or looked at them, it's one or the other. I don't think you, there was one of each out of the book. Anybody study it yet? Okay. It's you get a chance to run through some numbers on this though, and just try it, try this out. Because this is a fairly common scenario, there's a few more details. The approximation, how well B hat approximates B. And by the way, I guess I should, as long as I was drawing everything in here, this would be B up here. That would be B hat, if I'm thinking correctly. And we'll get into this more when we get into the um, orthogonality principle for the statistical part later. The estimate is formed out of the available data, and it's, you know, it's perpendicular to the error. It's not matching B, but it's the best you can do because what this picture is telling us is the data space or observations are trying to get as close as possible to B, and it's, it's making sure that the error is orthogonal to the data, but it can't do anything better. It, it, if it looks kind of ugly the way I drew the picture, I just sort of exaggerated things. B hat there is as close to B as you can get with the available data from an estimation theory standpoint. Is that reasonable? I mean, you want to get more data, but 
who's to say that the data, more data you might observe in the system will get you any closer. I guess when we talk about Kalman filtering later, we'll talk about the innovations process and what it means to have an innovation mathematically, not commercially, and in innovating a product, but innovations is the idea that when you get more data, you study it statistically and say, is this bring any more dimensions into the data space so now I can project closer to the true B value or is it just the same old stuff that lies in that original data space and I'm not going to get any closer? And that's, that's an interesting concept of estimation theory. Take more and more measurements, hope, hopefully that with more and more measurements you're able to get some innovations that bring you closer to what you're trying to estimate. Sounds good, doesn't it? I guess it would be like in a stock market analysis program, secret data that would allow you to better predict the trends in the stock market if 